Hello everyone, welcome to this day. It is Saturday, June 27th. Thank you for joining us. On our show today, we are going to have a United update from Manny Armendariz, and he explains the differences between various types of insurances that uh, you need to have uh, in your manor. And uh, let's go ahead and, oh, also we're gonna have some community information for you as well, some Laguna Woods Village news. And let's go ahead and remind you of the resources that we normally talk to you about. You can go to cdc.gov, and that is staying healthy with COVID-19, OCHealthInfo.com, which is where you can get all of the numbers in which Jeff Parker gives an update on three days a week, but you can always look at it yourself. And then we have COVID19.ca.gov, and that is where you can follow along with the governor's uh, reopening plans of California, as well as all of the latest mandates that he has come up with, including the mask one where um, we are required to wear a mask, all Californians are. Okay, if you want any additional information regarding the local news, then you can go to lagunawoodsvillagealerts.com. Or if you have any questions, you can email us at info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. All right, let's take a look at your weekend weather. It is looking lovely this weekend after the fog does dissipate. Uh, today's temperatures is 78, 64. Some low clouds, as I mentioned, sunny this afternoon. Then Sunday, we have 74, 62 clouds again, and then sunshine in the afternoon. Monday does dip a little bit, 71, 57, so those clouds are going to hang around in the morning a little bit longer. Our sunrise this morning was 543, and our sunset will be 805, so it is going to allow you to have more sunlight towards the afternoon. And that beautiful photo was sent to us by Bob Sellards. Bob, thank you so much for getting that picture of the garden and those beautiful flowers up front. All right, when we come back, we're gonna have the United update from Manny. So stay tuned. there are over 400,000 seniors in Orange County today. So where does a senior or family caregiver go for information and resources? You can turn to the Answers Guide, published by the Council on Aging Southern California. Answers is full of articles and resources to help you navigate the aging experience. You can pick up your free copy today at the clubhouse nearest you or at the social services office. The Council on Aging, helping seniors remain healthy, connected, and protected. Welcome back. Today I am joined by Manny Armendariz, who is here to give us a United update. And uh, we're going to talk mostly about insurances that uh, the residents can have. Well, hi, Manny. Welcome to our show. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much for the kind welcome. Let's oh, you're go. welcome. <laughs> I know. Well, welcome to our Zoom interviews. So uh, nonetheless, um, you guys had a discussion talking about various types of insurances that our residents can have. So what are the different types of property insurance policies that a member in the United Laguna Woods Mutual should be aware of? Uh, I'm glad that I was invited to give this presentation because this is an area that a lot of uh, manor owner members, well, let's call it members, uh, don't understand property insurance. And uh, there's a couple of reasons why that can be uh, hardly understand. First of all, uh, there's two types. There's the renter's policy, and then there's the HO6 or condo policy. And it all depends on the condition of your uh, manner when you purchase it and close escrow as to which policy will more adequately provide the coverage that you need. Okay. And uh, so what then is necessary for a United member to provide insurance coverage on their co-op um, since United Mutual already has property and liability insurance coverage on all of United Mutual's co-ops through their master policies? Excellent question. Uh, even though the mutual United have coverage on the property, uh, uh, since they own all of the property, they basically have uh, that takes care of the any losses on the property and also liability from their operating uh, the community. 
Uh, however, what our members don't recognize is that it doesn't cover every item that could be involved in a loss. For example, uh, you are a uh, lessee under a three-year lease uh, of the property that the mutual owns. So as a consequence, as a, as a lessee, uh, you have personal property such as your furniture, your clothing, those kind of things. Those would not be covered in the master policy. Uh, you also would have, uh, let's say you had a loss and you, you had to uh, move out for a week or two weeks or whatever it took to restore the property. Uh, that would be called loss of use. And that would be expenses to live somewhere else during the time you're gone. I would generally just pay for your rental or hotel costs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are other coverages that a condo policy would provide uh, in addition to these. Okay. okay. So how, how do you decide if you should have a renter's policy or an HO6 policy? Another good question. Uh, when you close escrow on your unit, uh, the uh, process is that prior to that, uh, an inspection would have done, been done of your unit by the mutual. And then uh, that lists all the items that uh, either are in conformance with land or any alterations or improvements that you've made to the manor. And when you close escrow, you're also providing that same list of all these improvements. Now, if you have a, a manor that's in the original condition, uh, the previous owner never made any improvements to it, you haven't made any improvements to it, and it is maintained by the mutual, they're responsible for repair they're also responsible for replacements. In that situation, you are in a typical renter situation. So a renter's policy is all you would really need. Now, if you do any alterations at all, like I purchased a unit that was basically totally remodeled. In that case, then you will not have adequate insurance. And so that's where you would want a condo policy because the condo policy would then have an, a coverage for improvements that you're totally responsible for. Uh, because if you do any improvement, even though the, the uh, mutual owns that property, you're still, you are now responsible for the maintenance repair and replacement of that. Uh, also, uh, when you have a, a co-op policy, you have other coverages that you would have under a renter's policy. But the basic distinction as to when, which one you would select would be depend on the condition of your manor. Uh, even after you close the escrow, if you do improvements in and you have just a renter's policy, then you should consider a condo policy at HO6. Okay, so when you talk about maintenance on the equipment, uh, like, like the refrigerator or any appliance that may be updated, like you said, or upgraded in that process, is that like one of those uh, maintenance HOA, I'm not kind of HOA, it's like a- No, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Is that what the, is that what you're referring to? No. That's okay. different. That's different. Okay. okay. Uh, because all these coverages are in the event of a loss. Okay. okay. Now they do have contracts out there where you pay a monthly fee mm -hmm. and they'll uh, provide uh, the maintenance of any of your appliances, your refrigerator, your stove, those kinds of things. Right. And even have uh, protection in there in case they have to replace it. Now that's, that's totally different from either renters or each other. That's uh a special contract for insuring your appliances for okay. repairs, maintenance, even replacement. So you could still do that if you needed to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm looking into that myself right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure that people could still get that if they wanted to because oh, yeah. it's yeah. not covered. They now. could get that on there either if they have a renter's yeah. or if they had an, an angel say condo policy, they could get that other. And that would usually be through a company that provides that service, not through an insurance right. company. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the differences between a renter's policy and an HO6 policy. Well, again, um, for some of these questions, even though I thought oh, I was very knowledgeable, I still looked up some of these to be sure of it. And um, when... Uh, I first moved into Laguna Woods Village, uh, I was a renter because I wanted to look around and make sure I got the location I wanted and the type unit. So I looked up my old renter's policy and surprisingly enough, here's what, here's what it had. Uh, it had uh, property coverage and it was just personal property, but it did have $10,000 of improvements, which surprised me. 
Uh, it had uh, lie coverage, $300,000. It had loss of use coverage, and it had medical payments to others. Now, the uh, HO6 policy, in addition to those, will have all those coverages, but it will also have coverages for the improvements so that if you remodel your unit, you know, a renter's policy, policy wouldn't be additional uh, value that you created there. And that, that's why you want to have that version. Your master policy that uh, the municipal provides would not cover that. So you yourself would have to have that. Um, and even though the mutual owns that property, you are now responsible for the mixed repair and replacement of all that property. So again, that's why you need that insurance coverage. Right. You have one other one that uh, surprised me. I even had to look it up on my current policy. And that's called uh, a, uh, association loss assessment. And that's a situation where uh, uh, let's say a loss and it's a loss that uh, is falls under the mutuals coverage. But then the mutual doesn't have adequate insurance to cover that, all that. And so they have to come along with a special assessment to the members. Okay. An HO6 policy would have what is called an association loss assessment. Mm -hmm. So you would be covered if all of a sudden you got hit with a special assessment of a couple of thousand dollars, an HO6 would have that coverage. Okay. I, I mean, like I said, I, I'm knowledgeable, and so I looked that up just to make sure I described it correctly. You right. would not have that in a renter's policy. You, so you have uh, the uh, you have the uh, improvements coverage, and then you have this uh, uh, association loss assessment coverage. Those you would not have in a renter's. So that's basically the, the two differences. Uh, you know, when you when you check into these kinds of insurances, are they costly or are they pretty reasonable? Well, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question and I looked that up myself because I was curious. The policy that I took out when I was a renter, uh, and that was in uh, 2016, uh, policy was $520 and I'm just getting ready to renew my new policy and that was a renter's policy. Right. And I'm just getting ready to renew my new policy July 5th and that is $830. Uh -huh. So it is more expensive but not that significantly, particularly when you consider that insurance premiums have gone up in the last year because of all the borrowings that we've had. So that's right. a good comparison, I told you. And, and the amounts of coverages that I have, for example, uh, liability, uh, loss of use, uh, those are the, were the same as the policy is under uh, my HO6. Right. However, for uh, the same thing with personal property, that was 1000 it's still 50000 Liability was three hundred thousand, still hundred three hundred thousand, but my building property I've got one hundred five thousand dollars, and that's the value I placed on the additional improvements that I added to this unit. Okay. Uh, I also have this uh, association loss assessment. I have fifty one thousand dollars in coverage for that. So oh, wow. uh, those are the differences, and that gives you an idea of the premium cost per year. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, good. Now there are some other things that. Uh, you wanted to tell us about in regards to fault because you know there would be a determination as to whose fault it was and you know here i thought we live yes. in a no fault state i know we do for auto sure we do <laughs> but what how does that apply with this type of insurance good good reminder um since you've got uh two different policies in play you got the mutuals policy like the entire development and then you got the each individual policy the key thing there is who caused the loss. For example, uh, whether you've got a renter's policy or an HO6 policy, let's say your unit had a water leak in the wall and it had nothing to do with any of the improvements you did or whatever, it's just, it just evolved, developed. Well, the association is the one responsible for repairing that. So any losses you would incur in addition to that, like let's say it ruins your floor or your furniture and all that, then that would fall under the mutual policy. Now let's suppose that uh, you had a kitchen fire that was caused because of your negligence. Okay, and that's the case where your policy would come into play. So the key thing there is whose fault is it that created the loss as to whose policy will come into play. Uh, the only exception to that, of course, is like I said, 
if uh, for some reason it fell under the uh, mutual responsibility and there was a loss and there was enough insurance to cover it, that's when the member shareholder policy would come into play if the shareholder had to uh, put through a special assessment. Okay. Yeah, I hope that Got clarifies it. it. Okay. And then one last thing that we uh, were discussing here is talking about if you own a co-op and then you're subleasing to someone, what are some advisements that you have regarding that? Good reminder. Uh, if you own a unit and you sublease it out to another person, uh, you should de definitely insist in your rental agreement that they have, have renters insurance. I know when I rented my unit here, it wasn't a requirement. I just knew enough about insurance that I knew I wanted to cover my contents and I wanted to have a lot of liability coverage in case somebody uh, had an accident within my unit. But a lot of people may not realize that when they go to sublease their unit to somebody else, that that should be in their lease agreement. And they should also get documentation on that. They should get a copy of the policy or a writer or something that states that they're additional insured, it identifies their unit, that it's in place, and also it should have a provision in there that if the insurance company decides to cancel the policy, they will notify you 30 days in advance of that cancellation. Okay. Or uh, if uh, they're not gonna renew the policy, a cancellation can happen anytime, but if they're not gonna renew it at the anniversary date, again, they should have that clause that they must notify you 30 days in advance because then you can go back to your tenant and say, hey, wait a second, you don't, you, before this lease comes up for renewal, you have to provide a proof of insurance again. Okay. So that's what I would recommend there, okay? Now I do have some other uh, advices to give, and that's that uh, quite a while back, uh, one of my friends that was in the insurance business uh, told me about umbrella liability. And uh, he said, you know, it's a bargain these days, man. You, you gotta take it out particularly, you know, if you uh, a higher net worth individual. Well, you know, we're, we live in a very litigious society. That's where people will sue you at a drop of a hat. So again, I would recommend getting uh, what is called umbrella liability co coverage. Basic uh, coverage under either a HO6 or a renter's policy uh, is $300,000. And you know, that's not a lot these days. An umbrella policy, usually you start a million dollars, you go up higher, but that's what I have. I have a million dollar policy, and that costs me about $400 a year. It used to be a bargain. It used to be like $200 a year, but uh, it's still, I would definitely is getting, getting that, okay? Oh, the last thing that I was reminded by, again, uh, the mutual, another good point is, I hope this has triggered some questions in your mind. Do not hesitate to talk to your insurance agent or insurance broker about these things. And don't wait till renewal time. You need to find out about these things in advance before a loss happens. So those are some recommendations. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, you're welcome. Uh, quick question for you regarding some of our realtors. Uh, are our realtors aware of these different types of insurance policies at the time that we purchase? Yes, they are. Uh, I, again, it probably depends because I know that I use the same realtor when I uh, located the unit that I rented and then I used him to uh, purchase my share in, in the mutual here. Uh, and he was pretty knowledgeable, but he did learn some things from me. As a matter of fact, when he closed, finished closing the escrow and went out for a little celebration, he says, you know, Manny, I learned a lot from you. I said, I know. Uh, and, but I said, well, Bob, you know, I did too from you. Uh, I think most of our real estate people out there are knowledgeable and they do point these things out. Uh, they may not be able to explain it, but I can, but they do make you aware of it. Okay, that's excellent. So Manny, if people have questions, how can they get a hold of you? All right, it's funny, I was gonna volunteer that, but only if I was asked. I am asking. Call me at, <laughs> okay, I can be reached at area code 949 nine seven five nine four nine seven i'll repeat that again nine four nine nine seven five nine four nine seven and you know if you have any questions yeah don't hesitate i'm available call me i like that thank you because well i don't live here so for me it's like sounds ridiculous amount of insurance 
But I mean, I do know from, from a regular standpoint that an umbrella policy is good for liability. Uh, primarily, like if you have a little dog and the little dog bites somebody, you know, the umbrella policy shouldn't cover something like that. Yes. So uh, that goes kind of above and beyond everything else that you mentioned. So thank all you right. for clarifying all of that. I appreciate you taking the time and you have a great day. You too. Thank you very much, Lisa. It's a pleasure. All right. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye-bye. And we'll be right back after this. Today, we are marking the beginning of a new era as City of Hope opens its first location right here in Newport Beach. We have 500 scientists and doctors who have dedicated their lives to beating cancer. So they use that intellectual capital to try to make sure every patient gets the best care possible that's known to science. Our movie for today is Won't You Be My Neighbor? And that is starring Tom Hanks, who is playing the role of Fred Rogers. So it's the story of Fred Rogers and just how, what kind of a man he was and all of his goodness and kindness. So that will be shown today at 3 p.m. with subtitles and then 6 p.m. without subtitles. And that is sponsored by Kaiser Permanente. So that's a really fun movie that you can take advantage of today. Uh, we have a couple of concerts to mention to you. We have a Saturday concert, which is uh, going to be live at the Village Vanguard, Joe Martin Quartet. That is at 11 a.m. And let me just tell you the website that you want to go to is villagevanguard.com. And then on Sunday, they're going to have a metal concert, which is Metallica. And that'll be at 5 p.m. And that is on YouTube. And you just type in Metallica at that time of 5 p.m. And they will go ahead and have that concert free for you. Let's go ahead and tell you about the Brain Workout Tuesdays that uh, we are putting on. And that is put out by AgeWell and the Senior Services Center. And that is every Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And if you want to participate in that, you can send Allison at CognitiveCareSolutions.com an email, or you can call her at 714-356-7383. And there's also another great thing that they're doing, but for your breath. And this is called Breath ATX, and this is every Friday at 11.30 in the morning. And this is where you're going to go through different techniques to help with hypertension, maybe cancer, heart disease, pacemaker, a variety of different uh, things that certain kinds of breathing can actually help you with. And like I mentioned, that'll be at 11.30 a.m. And if you want to participate in that, you would go to Elizabeth at atxworx.com. Now, we've been telling you about our 4th of July golf cart parade, so we didn't want you to think we forgot about that. That's coming up next Saturday. And it is a 4th of July golf cart parade where you can decorate your golf cart. And they want you to go all out this time. They want you to also, or in a, in instead of doing your golf cart, you can do your lawn, you can decorate your home, you can decorate your windows, decorate your face masks or facial coverings, and wear your patriotic clothing. Spread cheer by honking and waving as the parade passes by. Now, this parade starts at 9.30 in the morning at Clubhouse 1 and Clubhouse 5. And if you want to know all the details about that, how to participate, you can go to lagunawoodsvillage.com and click on the news thing there. So anyway, let's take a look at our weather for the weekend. It is looking lovely. Uh, today, 78.64 with low clouds. In the morning, burning off probably around 11 o'clock noontime. And then Sunday, we're looking at 74, 62, and we will have low clouds and sunshine in the afternoon. Monday, we are looking at a little bit cooler temperatures, 
71, 57, and those clouds in the morning are going to hang out a little bit longer. So there you go for the weather. Now, uh, Monday morning, we will have a Jeff Parker update and a special announcement. So do join us uh, Monday morning at 9 a.m. on this day. And you guys have a great weekend. Again, you can watch our rebroadcast at 12.30 and 5 p.m. Uh, every day except Sunday. And it will be a repeat of that morning's broadcast. So you have a great day in the village. Stay healthy. Don't forget to wear your mask because it is a mandate by the governor for all Californians. Again, have a great day in the village. Stay healthy. We'll see you on Monday.